Hello everyone, it is me and today we're going over Valen. You've all been asking for it. Here he is, the whole hero spotlight and my talent rundown on the Ice Boy. So yes, we're going to be going over everything you're going to be needing to know about Valen, why you should be investing in, into him because he is the best in my choice. Or my opinion, should I say, the best investment for any player, free to play, low spend, all the way up if you're looking for a hero, that's obviously not something like Lilia, right, where you have to spend money, right? But if you're looking for an investment for your legendary heads, for me, Valen is going to be the choice. We're going to go over everything you're going to need to know why. So before we run into everything, you know what these videos are like. We're going to be going over the skills, the talents, artifacts and pairings. Everything you're going to need to know between it. And with this in particular, boy, I know everything in and out. So when it comes to the pairings, there's going to be a very in-depth, detailed guide for you guys for you to follow, right? So smash a like, comment and subscribe to the channel. Before we get into it, I am here daily uploading for free to play players doing the Road to Glory series as well as all things Call of Dragons, events, hero guides, you name it, it's here, right? So with all that said, let's get into the video. So when we're looking at Valen himself, he is an amazing mage. He is one of the first you can unlock through the gold keys. Really great that he is in the game. And with that, he has three talent trees that are up all amazing because you don't have anything that's wasted. You have magic, PvP and control. Really great foundation to work with as well as his foundational talents, right? Just remember guys, with your star level, this is how you unlock your skills. So always, always level 5 this skill first before you even upgrade your star level because if you do that, you're going to have a nice 5 skill 1-1-1 one, one, one on Unlock and you're going to be able to, you know, level up as you please as you go through, right? So, when we look at Valen, why is he such a phenomenal hero, right? So, we're going to look down his skills first. So, his skills are really, really impactful on the open field combat. So, he hits 1200 damage to one target and then obviously two surrounding targets, so that's three. But obviously reducing the amount of damage dealt because it's just the way the game works with AoE. It's only about 15%, so it's not too much. So you're going to hit some massive AoE nukes with him. As well, he reduces the march speed by 20%, meaning you're going to be able to chase down those targets and kill them. And obviously if they're a bit too strong, if you hit them with a skill you're going to be able to run away because they're going to be 20% slower. Very powerful in the open field. But that is not what makes him an outstanding hero. That is what we kind of expect from a mage hero. It's when we go into his actual skill 2 and skill 3. So when we go into skill 2, he has a massive 15% hero skill damage bonus. Plus an additional 20% march speed. Allowing you to excel in PvP. You're going to be able to chase down those targets even easier now when you freeze them and you're gonna be able to run away just as easy and reposition right so it's a very powerful um, ability all in one 15% hero skill damage is the same as Waldir, and you get this with that 20% mark speed so it's even more than you get on the younger epic boy right but this is when it starts to go a bit too nuts for Valen. Valen has one of the most powerful, I think, talents in the game or skills, which is a 10% magic unit hero skill crit rate bonus, meaning even without talents, 1 in 10 chances, you're going to be critting that target and that does amplify the amount of damage you're going to be putting out. And if you crit them on the first, you know, round of combat when you do your first skill cycle and you're both white and yours is crit and, you're, and they don't, you're going to see a massive damage swing in your favor and you're going to beat them. But on top of that, we get a nice 15% defensive stat. So we are going to be able to survive longer in the open field. And to top it all off, with all this increased in damage to our kit, we are able to as well reduce the target's magic defense reduction by 20% 
and apply the freeze again onto the target, reducing their mark speed by 12, uh, 20%. This is obviously at max ranks, right? But this is where we get really interesting. So we have this skill, which obviously puts freeze on the target, and we also have this which also puts freezes on the target. So when we do expertise him or when we awaken our Valen, we get our additional skill. And this is a new passive skill when it says when we cast our rage skill, if the target is frozen through the freeze effects, the, the Valen will now deal an additional 400 nuke to that target and remove the frozen effect. This is massive because what could happen with just Valen alone he could auto attack you and put your march obviously in a 20% freeze, then deal 400 damage to you and then deal that big 1200 damage and apply the freeze again. So you're able to layer an amount of CC on someone and dish out an amount in an insane amount, shall I say, of damage for Valen. He is honestly such a great hero to put into. And the reason why is as well when we go into the pairings. So as everyone knows, League of Order, if you're going for that PvP mage, you get Waldir. And Waldir as a primary with even an expertise Valen behind him is going to make this match go into even more steroids because... With Waldir, you also gain the freeze effect on his abilities, especially when he's awakened. So now you have two commanders working together, increasing each other's attack and health. They gain an over 30% hero skill damage bonus, and Waldir gives him that nice 600 damage skill factor, as well as when you do have this effect, obviously you freeze the target and you reduce their attack by 20%, and an absurd amount of stats that work beautifully with Valen, and obviously makes use of Snowblind, allowing Valen to be even more active when it comes up, right? And the cool thing is when we do look at Waldir, the reason why we want to go Waldir primary in this instance is because of the skill tree the skill tree does give us that amazing rage engine and that's what we want if we're running that build to keep firing off as much as we can another a great great commander pairing but this is someone obviously if you're a low spender is Lilia. So even Lilia at 5111, we've got her a little bit higher, but at 5111, she is an amazing hero, especially paired with a 51111 um, Valen. The crit rate is such an insane amount of damage on your Lilia. Again, with that massive amount of crit on 1200 damage, plus you can also crit on this Scorch. Because Scorch is a magic damage factor based skill. So it's classed as skill damage when it is applied to them. So when you are doing that magic unit crit, it's going to hit and it's going to crit even harder. So you're going to be able to do an absurd amount of damage with a Lilia and Valen combo. On top of that, we also have Alwyn, which also gives you some nice synergy in the talent tree. Because obviously we can go into the magic tree later and we will explain it in there but obviously Alloin is a really good defensive hero and he does continuous damage so this is a reason why you might want to use him but another hero that I absolutely love is Atheus. Atheus again if you don't have maybe the wild deer or you're using wild deer for something else Atheus is actually maybe the last resort you want to go. He does give you some insane single target DPS, as well as that rage generation and healing and defensive reduction and the healing on top, right? So it's insane when you can put him with so many heroes. And that is why Valen, honestly, is so good. Valen can honestly be paired with any of these mage heroes and be absolutely devastating. The thing is, we, as I said, remember, while they are being the best with Lilia as well, these are the holy trinity. You can put Valen behind any of these two commanders and you can do amazing. You can also put Valen as a primary if you want to. And if you do, we're going to go into the talent trees very soon. So don't worry about that. But when we come to the artifacts, artifacts is everyone's 
knowing from the wild deer video it pretty much crosses over so any sort of magic bomb effect is amazing on Valen as well as Phoenix Eye is amazing on Valen if we come down here and we look at the breath of Yargantis this is again an amazing AoE um, effect for Valen reducing their defense massively and it does a little bit of damage on top which is really nice so you can hit even harder on multiple units so it's really great in that regards and finally obviously the infernal flame this is going to allow your match to do insane amounts of damage as well as scorching the units now so if you're running that wild deer and the Valen combo with the infernal flame you're gonna be an absolute dps machine because you're scorching enemy units so if you're running something like a lilia and an atheus combo that lilia has already got a target that's already scorched because of your artifacts allowing her to work really well with this skill four right so that is the artifacts and pairings skills covered by Valen. I hope you enjoyed it. Smash the like, comment and subscribe so far to the video. And let's go into the juicy talent pages. So here we are at the talent pages for Valen. We're going to go over the first one, which I think personally is the best talent page to start with and then we're going to go over as you can see we're going to go into the control tree so when we finish this one we're going to go into the control tree and then we'll lastly talk about the pvp tree and obviously my opinions on each of these right so when we start we always keep again the same foundational talents we keep these every single time we play pvp heroes we always get the march speed healing and an attack and in your keystone is backstab which is whenever you inflict a debuff on an enemy you also deal two percent more damage for them for five seconds so your freeze effects and the gloom from maybe the wild deer pairing that you run is going to affect this really heavily if you have valen as your primary hero right so when we go into the talent tree, we're going to talk about the magic tree first. I think the magic tree is the most consistent base tree that you can run as an average player. But then we're going to go over again the control tree after and why I think it's a really good tree too. So in the magic tree, it's very easy to, to follow. We go straight down the middle for Valen because we want that beautiful health increase and rage and skill damage. Three key things we need for the open field, health more damage and obviously rage generation for that skill so we really 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 want to take advantage of that and it makes it really nice for us in the early game choices here and now you get the opinion that you can have you know the fun skill which is the energy boost giving you that eight percent chance but personally i prefer magic maelstrom the more i've been using this the more i've fallen in love with it you can feel the extra damage that you're inflicting compared to the random chance of potentially getting an extra few kills in the long term this does generate you more merits and it does do a lot more damage for your march when you're trying to kill certain units right so i do believe this is the best one when you come here you can choose between two you could go down this route which i go down and i personally think it is the best one taking four percent less hero skill damage is important for Valen. you might be targeted so when you're getting targeted you don't want to be taking as much damage and obviously when they hit you with skill damage a really cool thing is we inflict a defense break which is a debuff triggering that backstabber a nice little bit of synergy there with the talents on top of that, if you didn't want to go this route, my opinion would actually be to max out infantry tactics and to also go down chant. This is a really cool um, effect. It's more of an all-in effect. So you're taking a little bit more damage, but we already reduced that potentially here because you could also take five points here and go here. Another little you know, tip. I haven't really refined it, but this is what I'm going over at the moment. But you can go here and here and it's a nice little combination when you're trying to kill pure purposely infantry, right? If you're there trying to kill the front line, I actually do like running this combo. It's a really nice infantry killing combo. But my suggestion for a nice overall build, no matter what the situation is, I would always recommend going Egoism and Wither. Really powerful effects. And then this is where, again, you get a choice. And if you're choosing now to pair Alloin with your Valen, or if you're going to choose even to put Lilia behind your Valen, so you know you've got your primary hero is Valen, 
you can run Insult to Indra. Those two heroes, Alwyn and Lilia, both deal continuous damage, allowing your March deal now 5% extra on top so if you're pairing veiling with those two this is a really good recommendation if you're going to do that however if you're not going to do that or if you're uncertain one which i actually fallen in love with is when you're below 50 percent health you gain 7.5 percent more skill damage the reason is when you're in the open field you want your march to obviously stay as healthy as possible and the longer it stays out the more kills you're going to generate and the more merits you gain as a free to play player so when we hit that 50 percent mark threshold like a lot of other players will do on the other field that you're trying to kill you're gaining a nice switch and you're gaining that 7.5 percent more skill damage so your skill one is even going to hit even harder than it was more intended to be right so you might not even feel the effects of being at 50 percent compared to some marches and i really do enjoy it and then when we finish up, I do like Ecoclasm. This just does increase your ability to do pump out so much damage for your march. You could also have a really, really good choosing of Elemental Boost. This is also a really good talent. Either or, I would recommend because this gives you that 15% extra health when you cast a rage skill so you're going to be tanky when they obviously fire their skill one in return you're going to be able to obviously tank that hit so i do enjoy this really as well but for me i've chosen ecoclasm here maybe next season we go elemental boost let's see but for now i would recommend ecoclasm for that damage and to kill as many units as you can when you're in open field so now when you've completed this tree, for me in a PvP, I've actually gone down the control tree. So the way you want to go down the control tree is the way as follows. So the way we go is 5 points in march speed. Obviously, we get the 5 points in overall attack to increase our damage as well. As well, we want the rage. So when we launch a normal attack, we gain that generation up. And on top of it, this is the thing which I love in control. So when you go down this tree and you get to your talent choices, this is a really cool effect as well. Obviously reducing the max speed even further. However, this effect is brutal. So when you're getting hit, and this could be getting hit by four, five, six, seven marches you could be getting surrounded by. You have a chance by, of stealing 40 rage from each of those targets with a 10% chance. And it is a very quick rage skill that happens to be really good with Valen. So I do really enjoy this combo when we look at Valen. So we're going to go down again. You want this tree right here. If you want to screenshot it, screenshot it right now. And then you want to go into this tree and you want to finish up with your last point in Intimidation just to get that little bit more damage. Or you could obviously have a little bit less counter attack damage. Or if you want that bit more march speed when you enter fights, you could. But for me, one point in Intimidation is fine. And that would be your magic tree build. But as you can see, we're going to continue now down the control tree. So, with the control tree, if you've chosen to go down this route, as you can see, we're following down the same path here. And now we've got 5 points into 4% more skill damage. We've got 5 points into whenever we take more da um, skill damage, we receive rage. So, as you can see, these 3 talents here, when you go down this tree, is insanely well uh, combining together to give you as much rage generation that's staggered so you don't over cap per turn which is a really cool effect that might be in the game we don't know if you can over cap or not but this is a way you can stagger that by obviously having three different effects instead of going all in on one and i really enjoy that we could obviously go down this effect here reducing the march speed but for me i actually didn't go down here and we actually chose this sage is a really powerful effect you have a 50 percent chance to gain a synergy every time you inflict a debuff on the enemy and obviously we do do debuffs we apply a load of debuffs already with our slows and when we do we gain that 5% extra hero skill damage boost and when we combine it with the last talent and which I think is the cream on you know the icing on the cake the cherry on top we allow ourselves to 
potentially silence them for two seconds and this is a really powerful effect one in four chance again to silence them so they can't cast that raid skill for two seconds which is very impactful because again that's a debuff which triggers this effect which also triggers this effect right so as you can see the control tree works really well the reason i've been using actually to test to test it out and why i've been using it more often is because obviously as a streamer or maybe if you're a whale you'll notice your marchers do get targeted or focused a lot more right so if you're getting focused a lot more a really good way of countering that is using soul siphon and that's why i really enjoy this talent page and once we finish this page as you can see we will be going down this route and this is going to be the same 555 and the last point here going into magic maelstrom and for me the last one point would be put here just to deal one percent extra damage it's more relevant than the other two abilities right here so that would be finishing it off that control tree so that's what you want to be looking at right now five points in everything you can see on screen take a screenshot right now and then you can go here and you'll be finishing this skill and putting one point here to finish off your control tree. Finally, we do have the last tree, which is the PvP tree. And I've gone down a little funky route here and I do enjoy it really much when I've tried it. It did cost me a little bit of gems to do this, but it is what it is on the best, you know, on the beta tester server. I do this for you guys. So you don't have to do it. So with this, I noticed this PvP tree has a bunch of damage. So a really good thing you can do is have your attack and put one point into some march speed just to give yourself a little bit more extra on top. It doesn't um, hurt since these other two skills we don't really care about. We don't really care about normal attack damage. It's nice to have that extra 4% so we're going to take it. But when we come into this next tree, it is down to preference. Personally, I feel the rage generation is the best one here. The reason is because when we go afterwards, we will be going into the control tree again, going here, going into here, and getting the rage combination again, like we did early in the control tree, to combine with this talent. And the reason is because we, we could go health and it's fine, but for me, we have enough damage up here when we look up in the further of the tree right so this is why i go for the rage generation i think it's the better talent but there's you could go five points in overall health i think this obviously will be more beneficial for low spenders and for whales but if you're a free to play player the rage generation is more impactful because you need as much of that skill damage firing off as possible and in this talent tree you don't get that much choice when it comes to rage generation so that's why we've gone for it so now in my opinion we're going to be in the back line and while we're in combat we can increase our damage dealt really easily now by three percent really powerful effect and this is why i said we don't need this skill damage because we're going to be increasing all our damage dealt here by three percent as well as increasing our legion capacity by 1500 which is also increasing the amount of damage we're putting out because we have more troops on the field and then finally, this literally says the same. We, our Legion deals 1.5% more damage. So this is more skill damage, normal attack damage, counter attack damage, everything, right? We're dealing more damage. So this is why it's very important and why we've gone these two as again, because we've got all the damage now we need. So now, in my opinion, we go for the 300 troop healing factor. Allows you every time you kill an enemy on a 10 second cooldown to heal 300 troops so you can sustain in the open field without feeding too many units to your opponents right because that's what we don't want we don't want to be a guard player healing healing and healing and just feeding as many of those troops to the enemy we don't want to be doing that so as you can see in my opinion as always in the pvp tree and this is another thing with it we do gain a massive 10 percent health buff when we cast our rage skill in the open field and it can be triggered for every 30 seconds and it lasts for five so this is why i haven't gone for this overall health but you could take it to get overall 12 percent for obviously five seconds really powerful ability to have but that is the pvp tree down overall you know in my opinion i would recommend running down the magic tree the best tree in my opinion for valen and then you go down the 
control tree here to pick up this rage generation really nice to fi finish out the build so you have all the damage that you need with the rage generation that you also need for the build to fire out these skills and allow your additional skill to trigger as often as possible with your pairings so i hope you enjoyed the video guys that is my in-depth guide to valen the ice page you should definitely invest into him for me he is the number one hero in the game right now for investments so there is my opinion on him smash like comment and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and thought it was in depth and if you've learned something today with anything you should be you know using with your artifacts or pairings or even the skills right so until the next video stay safe stay sneaky and peace out